Welcome to a lesson on performing row operations using elementary matrices. The goals of this video are to perform row operations using elementary matrices, to find row equivalent matrices, and also to solve a system of equations using elementary matrices. So if E is an elementary matrix, by applying one elementary row operation to an identity matrix I, then if A is an N by M matrix, E times A will perform the same row operation to matrix A. So whatever row operation we use to form the elementary matrix, E times A will perform that same row operation to matrix A. It's also true that A and E times A are row equivalent matrices. To illustrate this property, we're going to write this system of equations as an augmented matrix as we see here, matrix A, and then solve this by writing this matrix in echelon form using elementary matrices. So to get started, we need to recognize that the two by two identity matrix times matrix A will give us our augmented matrix. And now we're going to determine what row operations we would perform on this matrix to put it in echelon form. And then we'll do the same to the identity matrix to find our elementary matrices. So if we wanted to have a zero in this position here, we could replace row two with negative two times row two plus row one. We're going to go ahead and perform this row operation on this augmented matrix, and then we'll perform the same row operation on this identity matrix to find our first elementary matrix. So the first row stays the same. And then negative two times one plus two, that's zero. Negative two times four, plus one, that's negative seven. Then we have negative two times six, that's negative twelve, plus five, which would be negative seven. Now on the left side of this equation, we're going to perform the same row operation on this two by two identity matrix. So the first row stays the same. For the second row, we'd have negative two times zero plus one, that's one and then negative two times one plus zero is negative two. So this matrix here is our first elementary matrix that if we multiplied this by the original matrix A, it would perform the same row operation as we did here on the right. So this product would be this matrix here. Now if we wanted to have a positive one in this position here, we could replace row two with negative one-seventh times row two. Again, we're going to perform that operation on this matrix, and then again on this identity matrix here to find our second elementary matrix. First row stays the same. Second row would be zero. This would be positive one, and so with this element here. So again, on the left side, so far we have elementary matrix one times matrix A. But now we're going to have another elementary matrix here it would perform the same row operation that we performed here. So now we're going to multiply row two of the original identity matrix by negative one-seventh. So we'd have one, zero, this would be zero, and negative one-seventh. This product here would perform the same two row operations that we performed on the right side. Let's go ahead and call this elementary matrix two. Looking back on the right side, if we wanted this element here to be positive one, we'd have to replace row one with one-half times row one. Again, we'll go ahead and do that here on the right, and then perform the same row operation on the original identity matrix here, which will give us elementary matrix sub three. So we'd have one, one-half, five-halves, and the second row stays the same. So on the left side, so far we have E sub two times E sub one times A, but now we're going to have another product here where this elementary matrix here will be the identity matrix where the first row is multiplied by one half. So we'll have one half, zero, zero, one. And again, this will be E sub three. So now we have enough information to solve the system, but before we do that, let's focus on the left side of this equation. What we should recognize is that elementary matrix sub three times elementary matrix sub two 
times the elementary matrix sub one times our original matrix A would perform the same row operations that we performed here on the right. So let's call this matrix B. So the product of these matrices here would perform the same row operations that we performed here on the right. So therefore this would equal matrix B, which is our two by three augmented matrix in echelon form. So again, this product is equal to matrix B, where A was the original augmented matrix, and B was the augmented matrix in echelon form. Let's go ahead and solve the system using this matrix here. This tells us that X plus one half Y equals five halves, and that Y is equal to one. Well, if Y is equal to one, this would be X plus one half equals five halves. Subtract one half on both sides, that would give us X equals positive two. So our solution is X equals two and Y equals one. Before we go on, I do want to discuss this equation here one more time. If we wanted to solve this equation for matrix A, notice how the first step would be to multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of E sub three. This would give us E sub two times E sub one times A equals the inverse of E sub three times matrix B. And the next step would be to multiply by the inverse of E sub two. So that would give us E sub one times matrix A equals E sub two inverse times E sub three inverse times matrix B. And then for the last step, we'd multiply both sides by the inverse of E sub one. So matrix A, our original matrix, would be equal to the inverse of E sub one times the inverse of E sub two times the inverse of E sub three times matrix B. So it is important to make the connection between this equation here and this equation here for our next lesson. So let's go ahead and formally summarize this one more time. Again, here are the two equations that we just found. This one we used to solve the system of equations. This is the equation that we found when we wanted to solve the above equation for A. Where these matrices here are the inverses of our original elementary matrices, which I provided here, but if you want to, you can verify yourself. And remember, to find an inverse of a two by two matrix, we can use a formula given on this slide here. And then just one more thing I want to mention, since we found matrix B by multiplying matrix A by elementary matrices, A and B are considered row equivalent matrices. Okay, thank you for watching.